This is my tutorial for how to build and remotely control a robot with a video feed. Here's the basic idea. We built a mobile platform that we can control from our laptop through a Wi-Fi connection. We're going to call this the robot. Then we make a video call from the laptop to our smartphone and attach to the robot. Now we can remotely drive around using our laptop and use a video call to see where we're going. Because it uses Wi-Fi, anyone in the world could control this robot through the internet. Here are some of the tools you're going to need. A computer for controlling and programming the robot. A smartphone for making our video call. A Wi-Fi network to connect to. A micro USB cable for programming. A Phillips screwdriver. Scissors. Tape or hot glue. And a soldering iron. You don't need a fancy one. Any cheapo will do. There are two types of parts in this robot. The mechanical parts and the electrical parts. Here are the electronics you're going to need. One Wemos D1 Mini microcontroller. Two of these smart car electric gear motors. One L298 Mini Dual motor driver. About 20 female to female DuPont jumper cables. I bought all these parts on the same website, banggood.com, for about $13. Their prices are way lower than Amazon, but the catch is that shipping can take 7 to 20 days. So if you don't mind waiting, you can order from there. I have links to the parts in the description below. Here are the mechanical parts you're going to need. 10 M3 by 25 millimeter screws. Two size number 62 rubber bands. This four AA battery holder with on-off switch. One regular rubber band. Two of these 3D printed wheels. One 3D printed frame. And two of these 3D printed casters. I know that not everyone has access to a 3D printer and you can't really buy these screws or rubber bands in packs of less than a hundred. So I'm going to sell all these mechanical parts together like a kit in one package on Etsy. I'll have links to all this stuff in the description. But if you do have your own 3D printer, you can download the 3D models and print them yourself. Alright, so I'm going to go one by one and explain exactly what each part does. The Wemos D1 Mini. This is a microcontroller with Wi-Fi capabilities. It's the brains of the robot and it tells the robot what to do when we give it a command. We're going to use it to connect to our local Wi-Fi network, which is connected to our laptop. When we send commands from our laptop, like go forward, turn right, or stop, the microcontroller will receive those input signals and then move the robot's wheels in the right direction. In another video, I'll show exactly how to write the code. So long story short, the microcontroller receives input signals over Wi-Fi and creates output signals that control the motors. However, the microcontroller can't supply enough power by itself to power the motors. It needs a special switch to turn the motors on and off. That brings us to the dual channel motor driver. This detects output signals from the microcontroller and uses them to turn on its built-in switches on and off. They're connected between the motors and the microcontroller. We can use just two motors to steer the robot wherever we want. If we only spin the right motor, the robot will turn left. And turning on the only left motor will make it turn right. AA battery holder. This robot runs on four AA batteries and provides power for all the parts of the robot. We can use a switch on the side to turn the robot on and off. I consider it a mechanical part because not all AA battery holders are the same size and the 3D print I made specifically fits this particular battery holder. Jumper wires. These are what we use to transfer power and signals. The female ports fit on the pins in the microcontroller and motor driver. This way, if you want to use the Wemos or the driver for another project, you don't need to desolder anything. Alright, so now that we've got all our parts, we can get to building. First thing we're going to do is screw everything in. The 3D printed holes are self-threading, so you need to push a bit while you're screwing these in for the first time. First put two screws through each motor and line them up so the copper contacts face the outside of the robot. Screw in one of the screws just a little bit and then do the same for the other screw. Keep alternating until it tighten up all the way. Be careful not to over tighten though, because that'll strip the plastic threads and make the screw kind of useless. Now flip over the frame and attach the left and right caster using the same technique as before. Now 
Once these are in all the way, put the chassis right side up and put screws in the top front holes. Go just far enough down for the top screws to touch the bottom ones, but again, don't over tighten them. Now strap the rubber band tires on and make them sit inside the side grooves. To install the wheels, just push them onto the axles with the cone-shaped hub facing inwards. Alright, now let's put the electronics together. We're going to start by soldering pins onto the Wemos and driver boards. Here's a link to a video about how to solder on pins if you don't already know how. The holes on the Wemos board are kind of small, so having a small tip on the iron may help. Remember to just be patient and wear eye protection. You don't want any hot metal jumping into your eyeball. Now that that's done, let's prepare all of our power and signal wires. First we're going to make our motor leads. Peel off two wires of the same color and don't use the colors red or black, we're saving those for later. We're going to snip off one end of the first wire and then cut both ends off the second wire. Cut as close to the female header as possible. Now we're going to strip off about a centimeter of wire from all the exposed ends. If you don't have wire strippers, you can carefully use a pair of open scissors to strip off the wire insulation. Just be careful not to cut off too much of the wire inside. Now twist these two wires together. Solder this joint and then wrap the exposed metal with tape or seal it with hot glue. Now we're going to attach the remaining metal end to the copper contact on your motor by looping it through the hole and twisting again. Be careful not to pull too much on this copper tab because it's possible to yank it off of the motor. Now add a dab of solder to secure the wire and the copper tab together. You're going to repeat this process three more times to finish making the motor leads. We also need to make a Y junction to split battery power to the motor drivers and the microprocessor. To do that, we peel off two wires. Use the black and red wires because that matches the battery box's colors. And it's important not to get these two leads mixed up or else we could damage our electronics. Snip the red and black wire in half. Now strip the insulation off the ends of each wire. Take two black wires and twist them together, and then do the same for the reds. Now attach these twisted parts to the same color wire on the battery box, and solder them together. You need to use tape or hot glue to wrap the exposed metal and prevent them from touching each other. Now all we need to do is connect some pins together. Here's a schematic that I'm going to walk through. The motors need to be attached to the motor drivers. The two wires from the motor on the right should be plugged into the slots labeled motor A and the left motor wires should be plugged into motor B. Don't worry right now about which pin should go into which slot. We can change this later if the wheels don't spin the right way. Now we're going to connect our signal wires from the motor driver to the microprocessor. Our code defines which pins go where. We're going to connect the IN pins on the driver to the D pins on the Wemos board. IN1 goes to D4, IN2 goes to D3, IN3 goes to D7, and IN4 goes to D6. Now it's time to connect the power. Like I mentioned earlier, plugging these in backwards can destroy your electronics, so it's important to pay attention here. Just to be safe, take the batteries out while we do this. Both the Wemos board and the motor driver need power from the battery pack supplied through the positive red wire and the negative black ground wire. Black, as a convention, should always be ground. So let's connect the black wires in our Y junction to the spot on the Wemos board that says GND, and to the spot on the motor driver with the minus sign, meaning negative or ground. Now we can connect the red wires to the spot on the Wemos board that says 5V, meaning 5 volts, and to the spot on the motor driver with the positive sign. 
Again, double check that the black wires are going to either ground or negative, and that the red wires are going to 5V or positive. Then go ahead and put your batteries in the box, with the switch still set to off. And that's it, we're done wiring the robot up, so now let's put it all together. Take a rubber band and double wrap it around the battery box. Now insert the battery box into the chassis so that the power switch is on the back and the wires are facing up. Take one wrap of the rubber band and pull it around the front screws. This is going to be our phone strap. Carefully unplug the four motors labeled motor A and motor B. Take the rubber band wrap around the back and put it between the two gray cylinders on the motor driver. And then slide the Wemos board under the rubber band on the back, between the pins. Mount it so that the micro USB port is facing up. Now plug the motor wires back in. Take any extra stray cables and tuck them underneath the rubber band to keep them from flopping around. And that's it, we're done building the robot. Now all that's left is to edit and upload the code. I'm going to have an entirely different video explaining how to write the code, but for now I'm going to show you how to install the Arduino software. You can go to this link or find the Arduino website yourself and go to the download section. Once you download and install the software, we need to tweak a few things to make our Wemos board work. First we're going to go to File, Preferences, and go to this spot that says Additional Boards Manager URLs. Now we're going to type in this link. Once that's done, we can close Arduino and then open it again. Now we're going to open up the Tools tab and go to Board, and then open the Board Manager option. Here we're going to search ESP and we should find an option called ESP8266 by ESP8266 Community. Go ahead and click install on that one. The latest beta version should be fine. Now we're going to create a new script. Select all and delete everything inside of it, and then go to the Google Drive link in the description. Here you'll find a text file with the code. Copy and paste all the text file into your Arduino sketch. Now go to the part of the code that asks for your Wi-Fi password and your network name. Here we're going to enter the name of our Wi-Fi network, which you can do by clicking on the available Wi-Fi connections on your computer, and then put in your password as well. Save this sketch and we're going to upload it to the board. Now go to Tools tab and then hover over the Boards menu. Scroll down until you find the Wemos D1 mini boards. There are many different kinds of Wemos boards, and although they are similar, we need to pick the right one. In this case, I'm using the Wemos D1 Mini Lite. The version name of your particular board should be written on the back. Also change the baud rate to 115200. First thing we need to do is plug the microcontroller in. Make sure the robot power is off first. You don't want to plug the micro USB cable into the board at the same time that the robot is on, because it can mess with the batteries or the board. Now that that's plugged in, we can hit the Compile and Upload button in the top left. If you get an error message, try hitting the Reset button on the board right when the progress bar says it's done compiling. This can take a while to upload, so be patient. Once you get the 100% sign, go ahead and open up the serial monitor. This is a way for the Wemos board to communicate with our laptop and show us what's going on. Hit the Reset button on the board with the serial monitor open. You should see text that tells us our Wi-Fi is connecting successfully. If it doesn't, maybe you didn't type your network ID or password correctly, so go back and check that. Now that the board is connected to our Wi-Fi network, it should be hosting a web page that we can connect to. I hard-coded the IP address in the code at this spot to be 192.168.1.113. You can change the 113 part to something else if it's already being used by your router or blocked for some reason. So go ahead and put 192.168 .1.113 and any web browser also connected to your network. And you should see our custom web page to control a robot. Hitting these buttons won't do anything right now because the robot power isn't on, so the motors can't move. 
but this indicates that everything is working as it should be. So now you can go ahead and unplug the board from your computer. Now we can turn the robot on with its battery pack switch and reload the web page. We should see the same thing. But this time the motors are going to move when we press a button. Now you should place the robot on the ground and see which direction it runs when you hit forwards. If it's running backwards, left or right, you need to switch some wires on the motor driver board to make it go the right direction. If the robot's going backwards, you need to swap the power wires going to the motor A pins and also the ones attached to the motor B pins. If it's turning left or right, just swap the pins on either motor A or motor B, but not both. Then the robot will either be going forwards or backwards, and you can leave it alone if it's going forwards, or swap both of them again to change backwards to forwards. Now you should stop all the motors and hit right, which should make the robot turn a little bit right. If it goes left instead, you need to swap the pins on motor A with the pins on motor B, but keep their relative order the same. And after this, you should be ready to roll. Now, make a video call from your computer to your smartphone, and attach it to the phone strap. Put the robot in another room, and start navigating using your video feed. If you want to learn more about robotics and how this car really works, I'm going to have some more videos explaining in detail the code line by line, how electric motors and drivers work, and a little bit about 3D modeling and 3D printing. I hope this is a fun project to build and that you'll watch more videos.